Hey everybody, it's Mike Sullivan with Born to Shine. Today we are super blessed with an awesome guest. His name is Len Fakima, and he is the, did I pronounce it right? Yeah, you did. Len Fakima, the superintendent of Ontario Christian Schools in beautiful Ontario, California. And Len, thank you, sir, for being with us today. You're welcome. It's my privilege. Now, you know, uh, our listeners um, range from superintendents just like you, Len, and admins, so directors of curriculum, uh, assistant soups, you know, principals, uh, parents, and sometimes students. So we're really um, eager to hear what your journey was like to become a superintendent because that's a really big role. It has a lot of responsibilities and a lot of people looking up to you for leadership and guidance. So um, what was your journey like to become the superintendent? Sure, I'd love to share that. Well, I was a teacher for 32 years and uh, I've taught the gamut from K through 12 in my career. And as I was a teacher, I've had several leaders say, Len, you need to become uh, administrator. And I dismissed that nudge for quite some time, um, but God led me to to become a principal. And so I was a K-8 principal um, for eight years, a four in Central Valley um, of California called Central Valley Christian, and then four here at Ontario Christian. And then um, our superintendent uh, decided late uh, to leave, to go uh, back to Florida. Um, and so she kind of said, hey, Len, you need to be the next superintendent. And I said, whoa, I am not cut out to be a superintendent. That is not in my wheelhouse. <laughs> she said, oh, yes, it is. And so she met with my wife and I. And of course, my wife is a very important part of any decision I make. And so uh, we prayed about it, decided, all right, um, I think I can handle this. And so I've been the superintendent for the last three years at Ontario Christian. And so that's kind of been my way of coming into this job. Um, it, it's been a good time, but it's also been a difficult time because I had the end of COVID and have to deal with all of that. And um, and now uh, I have to say it's, it's much better. Um, life is good. Um, you've got your ups and downs, of course, and you've got your challenges as a superintendent. But uh, God's good, and and I've got a great wife that's very, very supportive. Also a great staff, I'll tell you what. I could not ask for a better staff. You know, that's that's um, beautiful, and I, and I love how you incorporate, I mean, obviously, praying, number one, asking God for guidance, but that you also had the, the experience plus the humility, though, you know, you were saying, I don't know if I'm cut out for this, and someone saw it in you. They said, yeah, you totally are. You know, so that's really, and then how your wife came alongside to support you and pray with you and encourage you. Um, so that's, that's awesome. That's it. Thanks for sharing that. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then when, when you were K through 12, was there anything that you may have uh, struggled with a bit, Len? Like I know for me, it was, I was bullied and, and, you know, struggled with anxiety and depression. I had ADD, I had OCD, I had A through Z. So I was really struggling. Um, is there anything that you kind of struggled with when you were at school? Sure. When I was younger, um, I came from a very poor home. Um, my mom and dad were immigrants uh, from the Netherlands. Um, they raised six kids. I'm the oldest of six. Mm. And uh, being on a, on a farm, being on a dairy, um, and to compound that, we lived on an island. So shipping our milk and cows and what have you uh, was a little bit more difficult and a little more costly. And so it was, uh, it was difficult being poor. I mean, I did not get very many things new, especially when it came to clothes. Um, pretty much all hand-me-downs from boys in our church. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I was not very sure of myself. Uh, I think I experienced uh, shyness because of that. Um, if you go back in my yearbooks of of uh, high school, they'll always it always refers back to how shy I was. Um, I was not an outgoing person, so I really struggled with that self confidence um, until I had a coach in high school that uh, really saw something in me. Um, 
he saw me running one day with my dog uh, out on the, the beach. And he said, hey, uh, you need to join our cross country team. Mm. And so I did. And I became a cross country runner and a track runner and excelled uh, in that. And that certainly helped my, uh, my self-confidence um, for sure. Um, and, and, you know, just like you heard earlier, I, I, I'm not one that uh, takes a look at myself and says, hey, I can do this. Others see those things in me because I, I still have that a little bit of that. I, I'm not worthy of, of doing whatever I need to do. But God certainly blessed me in so many different other ways that I can share the talents that he's given to me. Um, even though oftentimes I don't see those talents within myself. That's, so. that's one of the greatest shares uh, I've heard. I mean, I'm really blessed to get to meet a lot of superintendents like yourself, Len, but that, that, that was, I love it because you're at the highest position within the school system and someone saw that in you and then running with your dog on the beach, someone saw some other talent, a God-given gift within you. Um, so it's, it's, it's amazing how God connects us with people to encourage us, right? It just takes one, just one person. For sure. So yeah. that's, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, what, what's working well within your district, Len, to support your kiddos, to help them believe in themselves and help them, um, you know, manage their way through, uh, I'm not popular enough, I'm not cool enough, I'm not good enough, I'm not whatever enough, because they are. But what are you guys, um, you know, either bringing in as far as presentations or within the school? Uh, sure. You know, what's working well or what would you like to see more of? Um, you know, we'd love to hear that. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, there, there's lots of things that we're doing. I mean, um, I think one of the things that we have seen as a school, especially since COVID, you know, um, that was a hard time for a lot of, a lot of people. And it's a hard time for our kids as well. But, you know, I was very proud of our staff and how we just stepped it up immediately mm -hmm. on that March 13th, when they said we had to close down and what have you, we were up and going with our kids that next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, kids had laptops. Um, our teachers were prepared because they'd already been doing Google classroom. The hardest was our preschool and our in our uh, kindergarten, but our teachers just stepped up. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that we really, really saw through all of this is how important relationships were. Um, just creating those relationships with kids. But then once, you know, we had to do Zoom with them, parents started to see how important our teachers were, mm -hmm. how important our, our counselors were. Because we have a counselor um, at at each campus. As a matter of fact, we have two here at the high school, one over at the the other campus, our K-8 campus. And they've done such a good job of just connecting with kids. So just seeing that, um, one of the things that we really did here um, on both campuses is create small groups. Mm. So we have small groups here at the high school. We have an adult with about, it's about a dozen kids to 15 or so, and they meet um, every other week together, and they just discuss what they heard in chapel or any other thing that comes up with the kids um, that they want to talk about. So those those students have an opportunity to talk to an adult um, that they feel comfortable with. If they happen not to feel comfortable with that adult, you know, they've got the principal they can talk to. They've got the counselor they can talk to. We have a campus pastor that they can talk to. We we have someone here that way as well. Um, over at the uh, elementary middle school, middle school too has done small groups also and created those. But one of the things that we did at our middle school is we we separated, uh, well, we did here at the high school too, it's male and female so that they feel comfortable within their God-given gender that uh, they can just discuss all kinds of different things. So those are some really big things that we've done. Um, our counselors have done just a great job going into classrooms and speaking about all oh, just the different uh, types of things that mental health um, ways that they can um, help them, but also resources that they can give to them um, 
they also have that in their own uh, uh, their offices as well. You know, whether it's uh, you know the soft music playing and and just praying with them and and so forth. So we've done a lot of those types of things um, within in the classrooms too. Our counselor goes into the first grade classroom and says, "Hey, um, here are some things that 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 you can do to help you." If you're just struggling with friendship, if you're struggling with anger, if you're struggling within your own family, so they have that opportunity to talk, and um, so our teachers too um, have that opportunity uh, when they meet with them. We we meet with uh, you know, and obviously in our elementary classrooms, you know, they have their own class, so they pray with those kids. They ask for prayer requests. What's going on in your life? They just talk to them. And they put the biblical principles that are so very important of love and family. And we are a family and, and our school is a family and um, all of those types of things. So if there's something going on in our school, then our parents know and we can pray. That's just a huge thing. And so support in that way as well. And, and I could go on and on because there's so many other things that that we do to meet the needs of our kids. And it's just so important um, just to meet kids where they're at and to help them see, like you said a little bit earlier, to help them see what gifts they have and how they can use those gifts going forward. Um, you know, our kids are involved in chapel. Uh, they can lead chapel. Um, they can share uh, their testimony in chapel. Uh, they can use their musical talents in such a way. Um, so, yeah, like I said, I could go on and on. So you can ask me any other questions uh, about that if you want to. I'd be glad to share. No, I, I love it. I love it. And and you you hit uh, two super powerful points. I mean, all of it was amazing. But there were two that really stood out to me. Kind of like when you're sitting in church, right? And there's points. Our, our pastor has three points every time. And then within those three, there's always an aha moment, right? Where it's just like, whoa, that was really profound. Um, and you said a couple of really profound things, one of which was just the power of connection, of relationships, right? Mm -hmm. And the parents saw that during COVID when their kiddos were on, on uh, Zoom or uh, whatever form you were using. And Zoom, yeah. Zoom. And the parents got to see how strong those re relationships were with the teacher and their kiddos. That's one. And then two is using biblical principles, right? Giving your kids tools and strategies that they can implement into their life and press into their life. Um, one of which was being loving. I think you said loving um, family, that your school has that family feel and that they have a safe adult to go to, the counselor, um, even the teachers and they come into class. So that you guys are doing awesome. And, you know, if there, if there are any maybe final thoughts or, or um, words of encouragement or, you know, anything, whatever's on your heart, I should just, you know, I had too much coffee. <laughs> oh, no, 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 that's fine. Yeah. No, I think uh, one of the things that I've learned in my 43 years of being in education is you have to listen. You've got to be a good listener. And um, I found that out in lots of different ways, but I'll give you a good example. Um, when I came to be a principal at my first school of being a principal, I had to go into a school that was not doing well culturally in terms of the staff and what have you. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of negativity. And so I had to listen to why was that happening. And when I could hear different things, then I began began in a very small way, just starting to change things and start to change the culture, get to the staff to come into the staff room and to fellowship together. And, you know, a big part of fellowship is food. Mm -hmm. If you've got good food, you're going to bring them in and you're going to uh, just create that culture of positivity, right? And so when I became superintendent, I knew that as well. So one of the first things I did, and you probably know this in California, in and out is a big thing. Oh, whew, best hand. And in and out is right next to our high school. 
right next to it. I mean, you smell it every single day. And so one of the, the uh, parents here at, at our school works for In-N-Out and she said, hey, Len, I can get you a discount if you bring over our In-N-Out truck to both campuses and treat your teachers. And so I did. And so I created that opportunity to just bless our teachers, our staff mm. with In-N-Out. Mm. And I did that on both campuses and that was so well received, of course. And just little things like that, where you can bring people together, um, it's just so awesome. And so our our parent group, we call it OCPA, Ontario Christian Parent Association, right? Um, they put on a luncheon at the beginning of the school year. They put on a luncheon. We just had it last Wednesday for all of our staff members for Christmas now. Mm. Food brings people together. And then you have that opportunity to even intermingle more with people you don't typically touch base with because we're a pretty large school. We got 1,400 kids preschool through uh, 12th grade. So it's a pretty large Christian school. And just bringing people together is just so very important. So my encouragement to, to leaders and to principals and so forth is listen well and then make changes in a small way, not a huge way. Just do it step by step. And, and I, I just really believe that if you can do that and create relationships in that way, it's going to go a long ways. Wow. So that would be some thoughts that I would have. No, I love that. Love that. I, they're the central theme I'm hearing today, and correct me if I'm wrong, is the power and significance of connection, of having a strong relationship, and then bringing all of the biblical principles in and giving the kiddos those tools and right. having that connection, the connection relationship, that uh, fellowship, uh, small groups. I mean, everything you're doing is amazing. I love it. Thank you so much, Len, for carving out some time with us today. Of course, of course. Well, thank you for asking me. I feel very privileged in that, in that fact as well. So thank yeah, you. It's been great.